guys, and today we are talking about the review of the Ender 3 V2 3D printer. This is a long time coming. Here is one of my first prints. It is Laserbeak from the Transformers, one of the cassettes that would have went into Soundwave. Very cool. Uh, I scaled it down a little bit so he would be sort of like pigeon size. Now I can just be like sound wave with my own little friend right here on my shoulder. Pretty cool, right? It is a true V2. It has a number of worthwhile upgrades. And I'm here to tell you right now. Um, on the video I made, which is should you buy the Ender 3 V2, I went through and assigned a dollar value to every single upgrade. And we came up with a $65 value increase over the original. I'm actually going to, after using it, there are a number of upgrades on there that I didn't really anticipate were gonna be so valuable and a couple that I didn't notice. So I'm thinking that let's bump that up by 10 bucks. It's a $75 um, list of upgrades that I think are really worth it. If you're on the market for your first printer, go ahead and get the V2. I would really say don't bother with the Pro. Either spend less and get the original or spend a little more and get the V2. Putting this thing together took me about an hour and a half. I'll show a little time lapse. And honestly, probably 20 or 25 minutes of that was trying to get the tensioner that runs across the horizontal axis um, put on. And the picture that they have in the directions show it going on one way, but I think it's upside down. So there's a little notch that allows it to slide on on the end cap there. So just pay attention to that. Probably self, save yourself a lot of headaches. Um, but other than that, it goes together very straightforward. If it weren't for that hiccup, if I had to do it again, I could probably do it in 45 minutes to an hour. It's very basic. If you can use a screwdriver, you can put a printer together. All it is is just following directions, putting on the bolts. The belt, the one belt that you actually have to attach yourself is so easy to do. And this new tensioner piece, once you actually figure it out how it goes on, it actually makes that belt just a breeze to put on. It's not hard at all. You don't need any special tools. Everything to put the thing together is included. Now for all this whole video um, on PLA, I'm using um, Chep's Magic 2.0 and Magic 1.2 settings for these little figures. And then on TPU, I'm using my own version where I start with that same profile, Chep Magic 2.0, and I make a number of tweaks for printing TPU. Now printing TPU for a drone hobby or for any of the hobby where you need something flexible like to hold a GoPro or to protect the end of a drone arm. Um, there, I have another video where I go over the settings that I use for that, but mostly you gotta remember printing TPU on a Bowden setup, which means that the filament runs through a Bowden tube to get to the hot end. You wanna go nice and slow. So I print at 22 millimeters per second and on the first layer, even slower at 18. Uh, I use CHEPS recommended on PLA and I go about 50 millimeters per second and I think 25 on the first layer. That helps that first layer get some really nice adhesion. Um, this thing is just so easy. Now, one minor gripe is that it does not come with the upgraded bed springs. I wish that it did, but I will say, I've been printing this thing nonstop, probably over a hundred hours already in the first week and a half or so. I've just been printing it day and night. And uh, I haven't had to re-level the bed, I think once I have. And that's probably because it wasn't perfectly level. Um, so it's super easy to print on. Everything comes off super easy. I haven't been using any glue stick or hairspray, which is nice. Um, I will note that the extruder um, it is the plastic extruder that comes on all the other enders. It's not great, but it actually works pretty good. Um, you may want to upgrade that later on, but for me, I'm going to stay printing with that one as long as I can until it falls apart. Then I'll replace it. I actually have a couple of upgrades ready to go, but like, eh, it works totally fine. And I wanted to let you guys know that I'm using Ender 3 slicer settings. I'm using stock everything on these because that's what you're going to do. You're gonna turn it on, start printing. So these are the type of quality that you can expect out of 
stock settings. I'm not calibrating anything. Now I will go and do that after this, but I wanted you guys to know baseline without any super printing knowledge, what you can expect. And the results are incredibly surprising. The quiet board is not as quiet as the Easy KR upgrade that I did on my stock Ender 3, but it is much quieter than the stock. So you can feel a little bit more comfortable putting this somewhere where it might be in the next room next to some people. It's probably not gonna bother them at all. I probably wouldn't put it in my bedroom um, because you are definitely going to hear the fans buzzing, but that's mostly all you can hear. With this quiet board that comes with it, you don't hear the motor noise, which is the louder of the two, which is very nice. Now this one is completely stock, uh, but I have changed out the control board to the Easy KR, uh, the upgraded silent board. So that one does have that upgraded. I printed at least one of those before that upgrade. Mostly though, that allows you to use the interface a little bit easier and it improves some improvements on how quiet it is. So we're gonna talk about all of those things that come. Um, we went over the upgrades that are worth it on this Ender 3 V2 versus the original. And so now after using it for a couple of weeks, I'm gonna go one by one and tell you which ones were actually worth it, which ones actually made a big difference compared to that original printer. Now, the control board on this upgraded board is fast, but on the original Ender, it's actually kind of slow. So that ends up being a big difference. The graphical user interface on the V2 is nice, but it's basically just the same kind of speed. Um, things are kind of organized a little bit differently here. One thing that I don't particularly love is though, you have this nice big screen, but it's kind of in a portrait mode instead of landscape. Now that does make the footprint of the whole printer um, nice and small, but as you can see on the screen, you can't actually read the whole part. So if you have several parts that have similar names um, and it doesn't scroll, if you go onto one, it won't scroll through so you can read it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these control boards off. So this is a nice feature, but it's not like a huge deal. The power supply on the V2 is no longer on the side here at all. It is under here. It also comes with this little drawer that you can use to store some little tools. Um, that's where I actually store my glue stick. Although I will say I have not needed the glue stick on this. So let's talk about the first upgrade that I think is probably the most significant, uh, one of the most significant, and that is this glass plate, the glass print bed. The original Ender 3 comes with a plastic one. I actually do have a glass sheet that was cut for this, but it's not the official Ender one. This one's like 20 bucks. You can get one cut for like five or 10 bucks from your local glass store. This actually prints exceptionally well, but I do have to add glue stick or hairspray from time to time. So this one has two sides. One has kind of a coated side that is similar to the texture of those pie sheets. And the other one is smooth glass. Now I was printing on the smooth section primarily just because that's what I was more used to. Um, from my other printers but what I found was eventually I went ahead and tried the other side and man everything sticks perfectly like almost no prints uh, ever come off of this and I did a super torture test I printed this object like this with no brims no supports and it totally stayed and this was like a I think eight or nine hour print. So exceptionally good contact. That's one of the things that's toughest to kind of master when you first start is, is getting those prints to stick. So this is a worthwhile upgrade. Now, if you have an original one, you can buy this for 20 bucks. I'll put the link in the description below. Next, the tensioners. Um, this, the tensioners actually do work really well. They're so easy to use. You just tighten them finger tight they're a little tricky to get on, like I said, but this is definitely a worthwhile upgrade. It's not really um, that noticeable at the beginning because all of your belts are going to be probably pretty tight on both. But over time, as they do get loose, this is much easier to fix. 
both your X and Y axis right here. This updated hot end, this design does seem to get less filament stuck on the nozzle than the old one. Now, there, it's not a huge difference, but that's slightly notable. One thing I did not think was a big difference was this little knob. I saw that it came with a knob, but it actually has a metal insert on there. Now, a lot of times I'll just print my own um, knob. You can print one for like probably 10 cents worth of PLA filament, but over time these do start to wear. So I would, you know, replace one about every couple of months. This won't ever need to be replaced and it actually has a loose fit. This one fits very tight, so you kind of have to find the right position. This one's slightly looser, so you just spin it on top of there, it'll fall in place, and it's really easy to get your filament going on this. I really did not assign any value to this control board, and I think I'm going to leave that there. But I do find a little bit of value here. I do find a little bit of value in this enclosure. And I do find a little bit of value in the power supply being moved because it does make maintenance a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just divide that by three and add $10 worth of value. So I really say it's closer to about 75 bucks difference. So if you can get this for $210 and this for $260, you go and you're worth going ahead and spend the extra to get it. I'd say 75 bucks is the break even points. And some of these upgrades are very easy to do, like the glass bed. Some of them are a little bit more intensive, like if I was gonna swap out the control board. Now I will say the silent board works very well. It's very smooth, but it's not quite as quiet as this one. This one is like almost completely silent. All you can hear is the fans. This one is very quiet compared to all stock, but it's not as quiet as that. So we only assigned a $30 value to that in the original video, and that's going to stay. I still think it's worth that upgrade because you don't have to fiddle with it and do it yourself. But just for those who are going to upgrade their own machines, get this easy KR board. If you're going to upgrade the glass, get that. But with, by the time you do that, that's already 50 bucks, right? And by the time you do the other upgrades. Okay, so here are some prints that I printed on both printers so that we can kind of try to get a good sense. Now these all look really good. So I kind of had to make marks on the ones that were from the original Ender 3. So if you look at this print right here, I like using white because you can kind of see the lines on here pretty good. On the original Ender 3, I did have just a tiny, on the original Ender 3, it does actually look pretty good, but you can see I have a little bit of under extrusion right here in some of those details. And no, on both of these, I used the same exact STL. So they're both sliced for the Ender 3. This one, there is basically, you can't see it there at all the under extrusion there's a little bit at the top of the head right there so it did come out very slightly better on this ender 3 v2 this is a really tough um, print this is actually really cool it's like a little astronaut it prints with built-in supports upside down like that so you really get a lot of detail in the feet you get a lot of detail in the back this see this um, little under extrusion right here at the top of the head. It actually prints like that, right? So this is the original Ender 3 um, right here. If you look at the little pockets on the leg, you can see that. And if you look at this square pocket right here, you can see it's not 100% perfectly square because in the top left, there's a little bit of like, um, artifact right there and if you look at the one printed on the Ender 3 V2 you can actually see that upper pouch on the chest is a little more square it's a little more um, this is like look at the pockets right here look at the little knobs this is a tiny print I scaled this down to really torture this thing and it just printed beautifully um, and so look at the head you can see that it does not have the 
under extrusion on the top of the head right there. It just comes out beautifully. I mean, wow. Another one of my favorite prints, this really prints good on these. And this um, is this baby Yoda right here. And it is uh, exceptionally um, high resolution. This, this little coat thing that, he, that uh, this little baby Yoda is wearing, I mean, it really looks like it's some kind of a fur. You can see the texture prints amazingly on this. And this one was hard to find any differences. This is the original Ender. This is the Ender 3 V2. I mean, they both printed like nearly flawlessly. The skin is so, like you barely see any lines on there. Um, I didn't even take off the supports on this one yet. I just wanted to show you guys just as it is. And again on this one, the coat, um, the details on that coat are just spectacular. So this one, actually I could not really find too much difference. This is a high resolution print. This Spider-Man, I scaled it down. You can actually see like the eyes up at the top. You can see coming out some of the web webbing black as well. Like I didn't take off any of the strings or the supports uh, too much. So you can get a sense of just how detailed this is, black is really cool for checking detail also, especially put some lights on it because you can kind of see those details shimmer. Really hard to see the print lines. I printed this at 0.12 layer height to try to get a lot of extra detail in there. And then this is one of my standard torture test prints. Um, this is just a little robot keychain. I give these away if I have uh, friends of kids coming over, anybody that's interested in 3D printing. Now, normally I print this in a much bigger size. This is the size I normally print this in, and you can see the size difference right here. Now, the reason I use this as a torture test is that there are some overhangs on here. Usually I test this to print um, new filaments, right? Because it's small, it doesn't take too long to print, and it's like something I can just leave on my bench and give away if anybody wants this one. I did snap this one's leg, but you can see um, this one prints on all the printers fine. I had made a scaled down version and I have not been able to get this to print on any of my other printers. Now I have a CR10 or I had a CR10, don't have it anymore, I sold it. I have an Ender 3 mod and an Ender 3 stock. I could not get this to print. It just wouldn't stick. It starts with these really tiny um, little things on the arms and the legs and they would always come loose because it's just so small. But this printed on the Ender 3 V2. So that is really, it took me to another level of being able to have print capabilities of something this detailed. And the cool thing about this little keychain is that it actually has working joints right here. Now the legs on this small of a size, I don't wanna break it off like I did that bigger one, so I may not, but technically there is joints in there. Really cool print. A couple of pieces, this is the one that I printed. Um, you can actually see some of the layers on some of these large prints. You can see it right there. So there could definitely be a little bit of tuning, but I wanted to show you guys both the good and the bad out of the box. You can see some of the lines, and this is like 8% infill, so it's mostly hollow to say filament quality, and you can still see a little bit of layer. So I wanted to show that to you guys. Okay, so here is how the Ender 3 V2 does with TPU. Here's how it does with TPU. Now, can you see that? Look at those beautiful lines. Now, it does have a little bit of stringing, which we can fine tune on the retraction and flow settings, but just out of the box with no tweaks does very well. These are some different drone parts that um, you can use, and that's a very typical use for drone people are printing are printing 3D parts such as this. The GoPro holder would then bolt onto the top of a drone. The GoPro holder would then bolt onto the top of a drone, kind of like this one. This is actually done by a professional printing service right here, one of the best ones. But you can see the one that we did at home actually looks very, very good. Here it is with the supports. Um, so let's go ahead and start removing those. You're always going to have a little bit more stringing on the supports because the supports don't obey some of the settings that you do for the regular part. 
so you really have an idea. You really have a better idea of, of kind of like where you are settings wise. You really have a better idea of where you are settings wise once you take off those supports. So here we are with them removed. And of course, with most of these type GoPro holders, you want to print them on the side going up. So there's as few supports as possible. So you really only have supports here and then right here on the side and then here. So check that out, guys. Very clean. There's again a little bit of stringing. Now you can hit that with a heat gun for about two seconds. You don't want to melt apart. And that'll actually get rid of all of those strings. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at how those turn out. Pretty good. Pretty good indeed. The Ender 3 Pro and the Ender 3 Stock Edition. Now this one is completely stock. Uh, but I have changed out the control board to the EZKR, uh, the upgraded silent board. So that one does have that upgraded. I'm just blown away at how you can, for $260, get into 3D printing. It's virtually almost plug and play. I used to tell people when I had my CR10, uh, they'd come by my desk at work when I was still at work and see little prints I had and ask me questions about it. And I try to tell people, you know, it really is cheap now. And I think that printer was like $400. But I try to tell people it's not as easy as a printer you buy for your home to print paper on. But now it really is a little bit close to that. It's mostly plug and play. Now I do suggest that you watch some basic videos on printing because that will let you know what to look for when something starts to go wrong a year or two down the road. Um, if you need to replace a fan or if you need to replace a nozzle or you need to replace the extruder or the Bowden tube and those things are regular maintenance that you are going to have to perform over time. So go ahead and get that education now so that in the future you'll be able to identify them and not be pulling your hair out. But it's really amazing how plug and play this thing is. You do have to go through a little bit of time to assemble it. But once you level the bed, which is pretty easy, there's a lot of tutorials on that. You just slice it in Cura, put it on the printer and hit print and it prints almost every time. I think I had um, one print that fell over and that was just an adhesion to the bed issue. It wasn't anything to do with the printer itself. I've had zero clogs. I've had zero other issues. So I think you could feel safe with getting this. If I was in the market and you do have enough money to get the V2, definitely I would recommend it. If you have the V1, you don't have to sell and get the V2. You can spend um, 70 or 80 bucks and get it all the way upgraded. The two upgrades I would really recommend doing the most are going to be the Easy KR silent board and the glass bed. Get the Creality version. I'll have the links down below. It really does stick spectacularly and it requires very little maintenance compared to the other one that I've been using. What do you think in the comments? Are you gonna start 3D printing now? Now is the time to do it. We're all home a little bit more frequently. We have a little bit more time in your hands. So learn a skill. You wanna come out of this downtime having learned something new, having a new hobby, a new skill. Um, I have been wanting to learn to print for many years before I had printers. And the main reason was to be able to um, print my own drone parts, which I was purchasing a lot. And now I can finally do that. Uh, which is really, really gratifying. And I'm getting better at Fusions 360 and actually designing custom parts of my own, which is also really cool. Thanks, guys.